Hello again, World Civilizations class. This is Mr. Lassiter with you once again, and today we're going to talk about Roman engineering. Uh, so we're going to be looking at some of the technology of the Roman Empire and why uh, it helped the Romans actually become so powerful. Uh, this is a little bit of a long PowerPoint. I got a little carried away, a little excited about this information, but uh, that's why I provided you with some fill-in-the-blank notes to go along with it. Uh, there will be some vocabulary. Make sure you get that in your notebooks. So let's get started. Let's look at our focus questions. What are some of the most important examples of Roman engineering? We're going to look at uh, a few of these today. And then how did Roman engineering help strengthen the empire? Some vocabulary or terms to identify today. Engineering, concrete, the Roman road, the arch, aqueducts, and the Colosseum. Uh, but this first term here, engineering, it's the branch of science and technology concerned with the design, building, and use of engines, machines, and structures, or the work done by an engineer. Uh, so that is what we're looking at today, it's particularly in building and structures. So what are some of the causes and effects of Roman engineering? Well, first, I want you to look at this map. Uh, the Roman Empire at its height, about 200 CE, had come into contact with people of Asia, Egypt, Carthage, Spain, Gaul, Greece, and even Britain. Uh, so over the Roman Empire's uh, existence, it can pull the best technology from around uh, the Mediterranean world. And that's, they're going to bring that back to Rome and utilize it themselves. But their engineering feats also give the Romans many advantages. For example, the building of roads helps move troops uh, helps troops move more quickly throughout the empire. So the Romans are going to invest heavily in road building. Another cause of this was a long time, uh, a long peacetime period, what we call the Pax Romana, and this was an extended period of peace and prosperity in the Roman Empire. Uh, it saw the expansion of trade, communication, and of course many of our engineering feats. And we see building projects expand in this time. So, Rome uh, expanding, coming into contact with people, it's going to cause uh, kind of this revolution in engineering, but then that also spurs on even more growth of the empire. That's an important thing to get today. Let's go ahead and start looking at some of our examples of Roman engineering. We're going to look at five today. Concrete, roads, the arch, aqueducts, and the Colosseum. And over to the right, you can see the Pantheon, one of the best, uh, the most important or most famous buildings in Rome. Um, and it is a good example of concrete construction. So let's talk about concrete. The Romans invented an improved version of concrete. It included volcanic ash, lime, mortar, sand, and stones. Uh, basically, they figured out a way to get these materials to react and form a much stronger and waterproof form of concrete. concrete. Uh, and it can be molded into any shape. Uh, and for this reason, you didn't necessarily need skilled workers who could work stone and make sure they fit together exactly right. Uh, instead, anybody could pour concrete. Uh, this gave Rome advantages in building. For example, stronger buildings, roads, and because it was waterproof, they could build bridges like the one you see to your right, which is a Roman bridge which was built in Spain. As you can see, some of these bridges are still standing. Some have been rebuilt uh, over and over again. And that brings us to our second, probably my favorite of all these topics, Roman roads. Romans built approximately 50,000 miles of roads in their empire. And many of these roads you can still see today. And in fact, some are still in use. For example, the road at the bottom right also known as the Appian Way in Italy. It connected Rome to southern Italy. Uh, many of these roads were in use for, uh, it should say, over a thousand years, not a hundred years. They were in use for over a thousand years and are still around, of course, two thousand years later. Roads provided uh, many advantages. For example, military advantages. These roads were built straight so that they could be fast for moving troops. You can see actually three of these pictures. You don't even see a bend in the road. Um, it improved trade, which of course brings money to the empire. It improved communication, 
which help the Roman Empire keep power. If they can send messages between cities or outposts, uh, then certainly they would have an advantage over any enemies. And of course we see new cities spring up along roads, which are hubs for trade uh, and also uh, strongholds of Roman power. And these roads were built all over the Roman Empire. You can see that they were built uh, in Africa in the top left. This is a road in France. Notice the, the ruts in the road from the use of thousands of years. Uh, those are from rolling carts. Uh, you see a road here in Great Britain in the bottom left and a Roman road, of course, in Italy. So here's a quote, actually, from Plutarch describing that guy we talked about a few days ago, Gaius Gracchus, and it's he, a little quote about Roman uh, road building. He said he was especially anxious about road building, and this is Plutarch talking about uh, the Gracchus brother. He paid attention to utility as well as to that which was beneficial to grace and beauty, for roads were carried straight through the country without wavering and were paved with quarry stone, made with solid uh, masses of tightly packed sand. And then he later on says, he measured the whole road mile by mile and set up stone columns as distance indicators. So obviously this road building was important even in the first century CE. Here are the structures of Roman roads. I'm not gonna go through it all, but certainly take a look at this uh, and what the structure was. Uh, sand covered in stone or crushed rock, cement, and then large stone slabs on top. If you go back to the previous slides and look at the pictures, you can see this construction, especially the top and the drainage ditches on the side. Here, here shows you a map of Roman roads. You see uh, the major Roman roads throughout the empire uh, in, on, on the right, but then also you can see in Britain the connection of the system of Roman roads in a zoomed in part of the empire. Uh, this was extremely important uh, for communication in the Roman Empire. And you can see that they had a vast network of these roads. Uh, and then we hear this quote, all roads lead to Rome. Well, in a way that was correct because Anywhere in the empire, you could take a road that would eventually get you back to Rome. Uh, and so this is just a map kind of showing this, all the roads leading from uh, all around Italy to Rome. Well, that's enough of roads. Let's move to the next, uh, the, the arch. As we say, Rome didn't invent the arch, but it is widely used in their architecture. Uh, and arches have two major benefits. First of all, they are very strong. Second of all, they require less building material. Let's say we're using the arch in the building of a bridge. Well, you don't need to fill in the entire underneath the bridge with concrete or stone. Instead, you can use the arch to bridge wide gaps. Uh, we see this uh, arch being used in aqueducts, bridges, buildings, and of course later the Colosseum. Uh, here you see a decorative arch, but uh, of course they had more utility than just decoration. Uh, as we say, Rome doesn't make a lot of the products you buy, they make a lot of the products you buy better. And so you see here the construction of the Roman arch. Pause to look at it if you need. But they were built around wooden support frames. And once the keystone was laid and distributed weight evenly to each side of the arch, when they stacked things on top of it, they would then remove the wooden frame and the arch remained. Here are some examples of arches in Roman architecture. The Colosseum on the left, uh, the Forum in the middle, and an aqueduct on the right. So let's talk about these aqueducts. They were artificial tra channels for uh, transporting water, typically in the form of a bridge supported by tall columns across a valley. Now, not all aqueducts look like this. 80% um, of Roman aqueducts were actually underground. And the aqueduct systems of the Roman Empire were built over several centuries. They carried running water, sometimes from over 50 miles away. And then water usually went to one of three places, the houses of the rich, public baths for sanitation purposes, and public drinking fountains. Uh, Eleven aqueducts actually supplied just the city of Rome. Rome got more water per day, about 200 million gallons, more than New York City could uh, handle in 1985. And we're talking about that's in Rome in about the year 200. So certainly they prized their water. 
Uh, benefits of aqueducts, of course, clean and sanitary, and it allowed for larger populations in cities. In fact, Frontius, a Roman general and governor of Britain, uh, who had been water commissioner for the city of Rome, said this about aqueducts. All the aqueducts reach the city at different elevations. Their abundance of water is sufficient, not only for public and private uses and applications, but truly even for pleasure. And then he went out on a limb and said, compare these aqueducts with such numerous and indispensable structures carrying so much water, with the idle pyramids, or the useless but famous works of the Greeks. He saw these aqueducts as way better than anything that previous civilizations had created. Uh, and here is the aqueduct system. Take a look and see how it worked. We'll look at this a little bit more in class tomorrow. But basically, over a long uh, mileage, you had a gradual slope, and these aqueducts would carry water uh, down the slope. It might be just a few inches every about 100 yards but they would carry these, this water from a long ways out because they did not have any pumps. They had to use gravity. Uh, here's another one, uh, another picture comparing Roman and modern aqueducts. So you can see, uh, since there was not a pumping station or a treatment plant, how the Romans uh, brought water to their cities. Here is a map of aqueducts in Rome. As I said, Rome was supplied by 11 different aqueducts. And then you can see this map on the right, which is actually the location of all known aqueducts of the Roman Empire. There may be some that were uh, lost or, or crumbled or, or we just have not discovered yet. And that brings us to our last uh, item, the Colosseum, also known as the Flavian Amphitheater. It's located in the city of Rome. It was built between 70 and 80 CE, made of concrete and stone. And as you can see, it used arches to support its massive size. This Colosseum would hold 50 to 80,000 spectators. And in the Colosseum itself, you would have mock sea battles where they would flood the Colosseum and have boats uh, have kind of these mock fights. Uh, dramas would take place here, animal hunts. Uh, there is one story of uh, an emperor who celebrated a great battle victory with uh, thousands of animals and thousands of hunters over a period of about 150 days in the Colosseum. They would have these great animal hunts with these exotic animals like lions uh, or elephants from Africa that they imported. Of course, gladiatorial games that we know about and battle reenactments would take place in this large Colosseum. After uh, Christianity comes in, the Colosseum is used for other things, including religious ceremonies, housing. Uh, it was a, a monastery at one point, workshops. It was used for the fortress at one time. Now is is a World Heritage Site, so it's mostly a tourist attraction. Other Roman achievements, there were many others we could bring, talk about. Water mills, cranes, which you actually see in this picture. Uh, military catapults, you see in the bottom here. Uh, plumbing, dams, bridges. We might talk about some of these tomorrow. Romans did not invent all of these. However, this is the technology that they widely used and improved upon. And these technologies helped the Roman Empire get power and maintain power. If you could have a bridge to move your troops more quickly from one side of a river to another, then obviously you are at an advantage in battle. If you have plumbing, then you have a more sanitary society. You have less sickness, and therefore you have healthier people to go and fight in battle. I think you see where, where we're going with that. So wrapping up, make sure you can answer these two focus questions. Make sure you get your vocabulary in terms to identify. Uh, take a look at this Appian Way again in southern Italy and go back and rewatch this PowerPoint if you missed anything. Tomorrow in class we'll be talking about Roman engineering. So have a good day and uh, see you tomorrow.